Hello, I am Gapwin, and welcome back to Besiege, the amazing, mystical, magical game about blowing things up with medieval science, ruled by Queen Rinifred, apparently. We're going to jump into my favorite building map, the Windmill. Alright, I'm going to call me Don Quixote, because I keep going after this windmill. Some highbrow humor at your face. Anyway, I'm going to start by building our trebuchet rig uh, that we did in the last episode, if you're unfamiliar. It involves uh, using two wheels as half blocks so that we can get the correct positioning on a hinge that then goes into the chain. And I want to build, build it again instead of loading the old one and modifying it because I built it a little bit wrong last time. I should have had a half block and a half block instead of... Oops, this needs to be... What does that need to be? Let's move this slightly forward and up because the front end needs to be a little bit smaller than the back end. There we go. Then we can have this here and should be able to put one down there like that. So it's half up and half out. And then we put the hinge on it like there. And this should line up in the middle if I've done this correctly. So we should be able to oops, bring these over and have the hinge stick on the end like that. There we go. That's the easy way to start off your hinge. And then you bring a couple down this way. Uh, I'll go with four this time. Bring it up a little bit. And then we need a wooden block. A bomb. I don't think I'm going to try to make this one reloadable. We'll do a one shot because I want to. Uh, there's a point I want to make, and I'm, I'll get to it in a second. Sorry, I'm just stalling on it. So, if you saw the last video I did, I made a trebuchet. And uh, because counterweights in this game are weird and finicky, I used the springs on it like I tend to. Like everyone tends to for this game, actually. And uh, I'll explain a couple things. One, had some questions about using the unpowered wheels for the hinge here. You've noticed now I'm using two. In the previous episode, I used one. Um, one reason for that is I think it looks better. I, it, it, I could use the swivel joint here, but I think the unpowered wheels or the or the um, new new unpowered cogs, I just think they look better. Um, I'm actually not sure if they have a better structural component. I think from what I've seen, it looks like they might attach a little more strongly, but I don't have any real evidence to support that claim. So don't uh, quote me on that as they say. Oop. And I need to make this a little bit wider for the front. You'll see why. So uh, last time I made a pretty standard trebuchet. I'll show you. I made this pretty much this design and then I attached the springs going this way like that uh, because counterweights are very finicky in this game and I didn't feel like messing with it. But uh, I said that that uses more or less the same physics model as what's called a counterweight, a fixed counterweight trebuchet. And I still kind of stand by that. Because even though you're using springs instead of a counterweight, attaching the springs to the body like this uh, makes it a closed system. Alright, so even though it's not a counterweight, this is pulling down and pulling the body forward at the same time, similar to how the inertia from a large swing weight would pull the body forward at the same time. And I used that explanation to explain why I was putting wheels on it to help dampen some recoil and do some other things. And I included a link uh, in the last thing to a video explaining how wheels on a swing on a fixed weight trebuchet affect the fall speed because it allows the weight to fall in a straight line for longer. I don't think that that quite applies with the springs, but my point was that it created a closed system for the trebuchet. Now, I had a guy, I believe, um, Dimitri, I, I looked at it right before, and I'm sorry, I'm bad with names, I believe it was a Dimitri. Uh, I apologize if I'm getting that wrong. But he pointed out that because it is not using a counterweight, it might be more appropriate to call this a a uh, traction trebuchet, which is the earliest known form of the trebuchet. Basically, it was a rig that looked like this, and instead of a counterweight, it had a bunch of ropes attached to it, and people would then pull down on the ropes manually to swing the arm around. And they were a lot smaller than counterweight trebuchets. They certainly did not shoot as far, 
but it was the the very earliest idea behind a trebuchet and then that design was taken into the middle east where uh the nations there at the time were able to play around with it and they had slightly better scientists than europeans of the same era and uh, that allowed them to that allowed them to uh, mess with the design and make it a lot more efficient by adding the counterweights and uh, taking out the manpower. Now, like I said, I think that since now since my old one was a closed system, I still think it's appropriate to call that a counterweight trebuchet, even though it doesn't use a counterweight. It uses basically the same physics because the system is closed as opposed to a traction trebuchet where there are people holding the ropes and pulling down, creating energy that comes from outside of the closed system of the trebuchet itself, if that makes sense to you. It's basically humans adding energy as kinetic energy rather than people adding energy as potential energy by lifting the counterweight, and then all of that potential energy is stored in a closed system within the machine itself, similar to how we have with the springs being a potential energy source uh, in theory they actually are applying kinetic energy but in theory a string would be a spring that would be a potential energy source that was stretched out and then all of that energy is basically stored in a closed system that is the trebuchet machine itself but that got me thinking of could we build a traction trebuchet in the game and i think we can basically i'm building this platform which is completely divorced from the machine it has no parts attaching it to the main body of the machine making a completely separate closed system and then I'm filling it with heavy things so that it won't, you know, pick itself up. And we're going to attach the springs to this. And hopefully that'll give us a better an idea of how a, a traction trebuchet would function. I mean, it's not going to be a perfect model, but this is an external force. This is a completely external force attached to this machine. This weighted platform is taking all of the strain instead of the base of the machine taking the strain. Now, in theory, this should probably uh, have less recoil. Why don't we actually aim it at the frickin' windmill? That could be a start. There we go. Now, in theory, this machine could have slightly less recoil than the other one because it's not pulling on itself. It's pulling on an exterior platform. The exterior platform will probably move as opposed to this um, rocking back and forth as wildly. That's my theory, anyway. So let's see if it actually functions, and then I might mess with something else if it works really well. So, let us pull... <laughs> uh, okay, so the theory, I believe, is still sound. I'm, I'm doing this more to illustrate my point more than anything, and I thought it was interesting to see if we could build a traction trebuchet in the game. Uh, it'd be great if they gave you people. I know that the game is about building siege engines, but wouldn't it be neat if you had even just stand-in characters? Like, you could put it on right here. It's my pilot. It'd be like playing Lego. Because, let's, let's face it, this is Lego. This is basically playing Lego. Who didn't build these kinds of things when they had Legos? There we go. Now this thing is actually strutted, so with any luck it will go. Um, I want this to fall a little bit more. Come on. Oh, come on. Whoa. That's a new one. Did this mess it up? Yeah, I think that messed it up. Pull! Let's take off a couple of these. I think the uh, springs are being too strong. And pull! Yes! Bam. Now this has about the same amount of weight. Uh, as the last one in the machine itself. It has about the same length swing arm and it has about the same pull. We only use two springs on that either. But as you can see, if we go into slow motion and hit the L button, what? Um, all right, this is not working as well as I would like it to. Let's, let's take these off. Come on, take those off. We'll make this smaller so it doesn't smack the thing. A little bit smaller so that it can maybe pass through itself. I had more on there thinking that I would use more springs, but as we saw, more springs did not help. But also, more springs would not be kind of a fair 
analogy to the last machine, since the last machine only had two springs on it. I should not have tried to use more than two springs. Move that back to there, and you can go into there. That's kind of the same. Uh, let's, let's remove this one rock, just for the sake of completeness. And L. Pull. Now you see, the machine impacted this thing, because I removed that rock. I should not have done that. So if we pull, you see that this this platform takes up a lot of the early strain, if it hadn't impacted. If I could get it to stop impacting on the dang thing. Let's put them more in the middle. It didn't impact as much when they were in the middle. Middle and middle. If I can get the thing to work. Ah. But you see, when this doesn't go, what, what my point is, the last machine had a huge amount of bounce and recoil when you fired it. This machine, even though the danged thing won't stay on, doesn't have quite as much... Come on. Eh, dang it, what is wrong with this thing? I can't get this danged spring to attach at all. Whoop, and slips off again. <laughs> Uh, if I could glue the dang thing on permanently. Well, just for the sake of, since I can't, no, 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 no. Cancel, go back here. There we go, and flip around, and fire. There, now see how rock steady the machine was? Um, but also having a little bit less power probably. Uh, we'd have to do a few more tests to determine whether it was actually less powerful or not. Ugh, I wish these. Come on, can't get it to stay at all. It's it's insane. It's just insane. I can't really attach anything to that without it breaking the usefulness of that of that hinge. But I would like it to not break itself off like that. I might turn on invincibility just so I can make my freaking point more easily. Pull. I wish I could give it a more gentle pull. Alright, this might help. This could let it ease into it a little more. Pull, no. <laughs> but when it's not exploding, you see how the machine is not really rocking back and forth as much as the other one. And that's because the actual source of the force, the source of the force, the source of the force is, I don't, there's a rhyme in there somewhere. Yes, 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 let's go. And flip. It's not going as far because this is impacting, it's interrupting the swing arm. Alright, but it's about the same amount of force, and we won. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Anyway, that is, uh, that is not rocking the machine as much. Now, uh, this could completely invalidate my point if I'm wrong, but let's remove this platform. Let's reattach that, uh, spring mechanism to the machine so that we once again have a closed system and see what kind of uh, effects we get. So if I'm right, this should have a little bit more recoil than what we had on the uh, other machine. Now I have to have them in slightly different positions. But recoil. See, now this is lifting. See how much this is lifting itself up in front? That wasn't happening with the previous design, even though this is not firing. So that. See, the physics of this machine lifting itself, like, because of the counterweight, it's pulling itself forward and slightly up, rocking the machine on its base, which would be incredibly dangerous for medieval times. But uh, the counterweight was also able to store a lot more energy than a few people pulling on the string. Wah! Fire! And boom! We got it! Ha 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 ha! Whoa! I think one of the windmill blades took out my machine. That's pretty crazy. I like that. That's interesting. But as you can see, the, the forces at play when you attach the springs to the machine itself versus attaching the strings to an external source uh, basically makes this a much more... makes attaching the strings to the machine itself much more analogous to having a counterweight system than having someone pulling on the strings from a separate location. So all the catapults and everything people are building with spring systems are much more indicative of counterweight systems or early spring systems, which were usually some sort of rope or tension bowstring assembly. Something along those lines. 
Anyway, I'm certainly not trying to call people out. I just think that was an interesting thing. I wanted to try building it. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jim, I want to say, Dimitri, I'm so sorry if I looked up your name beforehand. And I'm so bad with names that I would have to look again to make sure I'm getting it right. But I believe it was Dimitri. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, thank you for raising that very, very interesting point. And uh, I hope these experiments have been able to demonstrate a little bit of how the physics of these things works with the closed system imparting energy upon itself in potentia versus a external system ex uh, that has kinetic energy being enforced on the machine as an external power. Um, both interesting. I'm very glad we were able to get the traction trebuchet to work. Uh, I encourage you to experiment with these things yourself because it's it's very interesting. The physics in this game is very, very well well done for having a few wonky things. But I, I hope that was interesting to you. I love explaining these kinds of things, even though I'm not. I'm, I'll, I'll level with you. I'm not a physicist. I failed physics, but I understand uh, some of the key concepts like this sort of in my brain. I hope I'm explaining them well. And if there are any physicists watching this, please leave in the comments everything that I got very, very wrong because I enjoy science. I like educating people about science. I like to talk about it. But as I said, I do not have as much knowledge as some. So if I did get something wrong, please feel free to point it out in the comments. Um, this is a little bit of a shorter video because I think I might be losing my voice. A oh, little bit of a shorter one that I'm going to take a day or two off to you know, not lose my voice so I can continue bringing you videos. I hope that you've enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to join the discussion on physics-based medieval machinery, you can, of course, always leave a comment, and if you very much enjoyed this and would like to see content like it on the channel, you can subscribe. I am Gepwin, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.